Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five-day-per-week wisdom and legacy-building podcast. This is day 868 of our trek and time for our Philosophy Friday series. Each Friday, we will ponder some of the basic truths and mysteries of life and how they can impact us in creating our living legacy. As we continue on this trek that we call life, sometimes we have questions about life. So our Friday trek is a time where we can ask Gramps. Gramps will answer the questions that you would like to ask your dad or granddad, but for whatever reason, this is not possible. No matter how old we are, I know that all of us would like the opportunity to ask dad or Gramps questions about life in many areas. We will address areas such as finances, relationships, health and fitness, business and work, home repairs and renovations, seasons of life, spiritual and biblical questions, and any other areas that come our way. As your fellow sojourner and mentor on this trek that we call life, it is Gramps' goal to provide you with practical wisdom and advice about any area of life. It is crucial that we receive a constant flow of questions, so please submit your questions to Guthrie at wisdom-trek.com, and Gramps will answer them on our Friday podcast. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. While any time of year we can fall prey to eating junk food, we are no less tempted during the summer cookouts and family gatherings. Spring and summer gives us extra opportunities, though, to get outside and exercise more. We can establish new and proper habits, and there are more opportunities to buy healthy, locally grown produce. It is time to begin new habits of eating healthy and exercising. So our question for today is, Hey Gramps, I have a difficult time avoiding junk food. Even though I know I should make better food choices, I so often fall back into the habits of gorging myself with food that is unhealthy and causes me to gain weight. How can I change? So today we're going to look at why we actually crave junk food. This is somewhat of a complex question, so I'm going to split my response into two parts. This week we'll explore why we do crave junk food, and next week we will explore how to change your eating habits. I want to ask you this question, though, before we dive in. Do you really desire to change? No amount of scientific proof or logic will cause you to change unless you accept the responsibility for yourself and you choose to change your eating habits. Most of us know that junk food is unhealthy. We know that poor nutrition is related to heart problems, high blood pressure, and a host of other health ailments. You might even know that studies show that eating junk food has been linked to depression. But if it is so bad for us, why do we keep eating this junk food? There is an answer, and it has much more to do with just your willpower. If you understand the scientific reasons why we crave junk food, then you can make intelligent choices to also avoid it. Much of the information to answer this question comes from a report titled, Why Humans Like Junk Food, and it was written by Stephen Witherly, a food scientist. He explores the scientific reasons why junk food is so desirable to all of us. According to Witherly, when you eat tasty foods, there are two factors which make the experience pleasurable. The first one is the sensation of eating the food. This includes what it tastes like, whether it's salty, sweet, spicy, or etc., what it smells like, and how it feels in your mouth. This last quality is known as oral sensation and can be particularly important. Food companies will invest millions of dollars to discover the most satisfying level of crunch in a potato chip. The scientists will test for the perfect amount of fizz in a soda. These factors all combine to create a sensation in your brain that associates with a particular food or drink. The second factor is the macronutrient makeup of the food, the blend of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates that it contains. In the case of junk food, Food manufacturers are looking for that perfect combination of salt, sugar, and fat that excites your brain and, and gets you coming back for more. And let's look at how they actually do this. There is a range of factors that scientists and food manufacturers use to make food more addictive. The first one is the dynamic contrast. Dynamic contrast refers to the combination of the different sensations in the same food. In the words of Worthily, Foods with dynamic contrast have an edible shell that goes crunch, following by something soft or creamy that is full of taste-active compounds. This rule applies to a variety of our favorite food structures. Some examples are the caramelized top on creme brulee, a slice of pizza, or an Oreo cookie. Your brain finds crunching through something like this very novel and thrilling. 
The next is the salivary response. Salivation is part of the experience of eating food, and the more the food causes you to salivate, the more it will swim throughout your mouth and cover your taste buds. For example, emulsified foods like butter, chocolate, salad dressings, ice cream, and mayonnaise promotes a salivary response that helps us to lather our taste buds with goodness. This is one reason why many people enjoy foods with sauces or glazes on them. The result is that the foods promote you to salivate, and that causes a happy little tap dance on your brain, and they taste better than the ones that don't. The next item to consider is rapid food meltdown and vanishing caloric density. Foods that rapidly vanish or melt in your mouth signal to your brain that you're not eating as much as you actually are. In other words, these foods literally tell your brains that you're not full, even though you are eating a lot of calories. Think of foods like Cheetos or other light snacks that are full of calories but have very little or no nutritional value. The result? You tend to overeat. The next item to consider is the sensory-specific response. Your brain likes variety. When it comes to food, if you experience the same taste over and over again, then you start to get less pleasure from it. In other words, the sensitivity to that specific sensor will decrease over time, and this can happen in just minutes. Junk food, however, is designed to avoid sensory-specific responses. They provide enough taste to be interesting, so your brain doesn't get tired of eating them, but it's not so stimulating that your sensory response is dulled. This is why you can swallow an entire bag of potato chips and still be ready to eat another bag. To your brain, crunching sensation of eating Doritos is novel and interesting every time. The next item is calorie density. Junk foods are designed to convince your brain that it is getting enough nutrition, but not enough to fill you up. The receptors in your mouth and stomach tell your brain about the mixtures of protein, fats, and carbohydrates in a particular food and how filling that food is to your body. Junk food provides just enough calories that your brain says, yes, this will give me some energy, but not so many calories that you will think, that's enough, I'm full. The result is that you'll crave this food to begin with, but it takes quite some time for you to feel full from it. The next item to consider is memories of past eating experiences. When you eat something tasty, say a bag of potato chips, your brain registers that feeling. The next time you see the food, smell that food, or even read about the food, your brain starts to trigger memories and responses that came when you ate it. These memories can actually cause physical responses like, like salivation and create mouth-watering cravings that you get when you're thinking about your favorite foods. All of these points bring us to the most important question of all. Food companies are investing millions of dollars to design food with addictive sensations. What can you and I do about it? Is there a way to counteract the money, the science, and the advertising behind the junk food industry? Well, we will have to save that response for next Philosophy Friday. But something to consider. Before we eat anything, we should consider what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God has bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. I don't want to leave you in suspense, but we will continue to answer these questions on next Friday as Gramps shares with you how to kick the junk food habit and eat healthy. If you have questions that you would like answered, please email them to Guthrie at wisdom-trek.com and Gramps will answer them on our Friday podcast with wisdom and philosophy that Gramps has gained over the years of experience and study. I know that you'll find these insights interesting, practical, and profitable in living a rich and satisfying life. Our next trek will be Meditation Monday, where we will help you to reflect on those most important areas of life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 867 daily treks or read the associated journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Apple Podcasts or Google Play so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor. But most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, 
listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you on Monday.